Venous blood is returned to the heart by one of two systems, the portal system or the systemic system. The portal venous system drains blood from the spleen and all gastrointestinal organs between the distal esophagus and the rectum. This portal blood is directed by the portal vein to the liver, where it is filtered before being returned to the heart by the inferior vena cava. In contrast, blood from the rest of the body is transmitted by systemic veins. These veins direct blood back to the heart via the superior and inferior vena cavas. Because of this, systemic venous circulation is often referred to as the caval system. We will use the two terms, systemic and caval, interchangeably, since it is likely that you will encounter both in the clinical setting. Because the circulatory system is continuous and closed, there are areas where systemic circulation and portal circulation are physically connected. But in healthy people, there is little blood exchanged between these two since the pressures in each are about equal. A portosystemic anastomosis refers to abnormal venous return in which blood flows the wrong way through these connections. In most instances of portosystemic anastomosis, blood from the portal system that should flow towards the liver instead avoids the liver by flowing backwards to join the systemic circulation. Why does this blood avoid the liver? Because of a condition called portal hypertension. Portal hypertension means that the pressure in the portal vein is abnormally high, much higher than the pressure in the caval system. This usually results from liver disease that makes blood flow through the organ more difficult. Portosystemic anastomoses are important indicators of liver pathology and can lead to swollen veins called varices that may cause clinical problems in this video, we will discuss three common types of portosystemic anastomoses, esophageal varices, caput medusa, and anorectal varices. Let's begin with esophageal varices. Blood from most of the esophagus does not pass through the liver, but is transmitted to the heart by the caval system. However, the distal portion of the esophagus does send its venous blood inferiorly to join the portal system. In the region where this transition occurs, there are venous channels that connect the portal and caval systems. Under normal circumstances, there is very little backflow through these interconnecting channels. However, when portal blood flow through the liver is impaired and portal pressure becomes high enough, then some portal blood will be shunted to the lower pressure caval system through the interconnecting channels, thus forming a portosystemic anastomosis. Portal blood will continue to be sent directly to the caval system until the pressure in the two systems becomes equal again. If a large amount of portal blood is shunted this way, it can cause the smaller systemic veins to dilate and form varicosities, or varices. Varices are weakened segments of vein due to the fact that their walls are stretched and thin. Varices can form both on the external surface of the esophagus and internally under the esophageal mucosa, where they protrude into the lumen of the esophagus. Internal esophageal varices are very dangerous, since these swollen vessels may eventually rupture and release a substantial amount of blood. This bleeding is often not immediately apparent since the leaking blood is swallowed and passed through the GI system. In many cases, the first sign of bleeding esophageal varices is black and tarry stool caused by the breakdown of red blood cells in the GI tract. This is a potentially lethal condition often associated with massive acute hemorrhage and represents a medical emergency. Esophageal varices are the most dangerous result of pathological portosystemic anastomoses but anastomoses also occur in other areas. Regardless of the region, though, the underlying process is the same. Increased pressure in the portal system shunts portal blood to systemic veins, and the subsequent increase in volume passing through the systemic veins causes the formation of varices. Now let's look at two other portosystemic anastomoses, caput medusa and anorectal varices. Caput medusa, or in English, medusa's head, refers to swollen subcutaneous veins on the surface of the abdomen that radiate out from the umbilicus. The appearance of these swollen, tortuous veins reminded early clinicians of images of the mythological Greek goddess Medusa, who is depicted as having snakes in place of hair. Caput medusa results from portal venous hypertension in the umbilical vein that spreads into subcutaneous systemic veins on the abdomen. The umbilical vein is important during fetal development as it delivers oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus. Along its course, the umbilical vein also receives blood from small systemic veins on the surface of the abdomen. The umbilical vein delivers some of its blood directly to the liver. After birth and removal of the placenta, the umbilical vein no longer transmits blood. It gradually becomes closed off, but remains in the body as the ligamentum teres hepatis 
or round ligament of the liver. Even though the round ligament does not normally transmit blood, it still maintains the remnant of a lumen, and the pressure increase from portal hypertension can be sufficient to reopen this channel and allow backflow of portal blood to the superficial veins of the periumbilical region. These then become engorged, forming the caput medusa. While caput medusa can be indicative of severely elevated portal pressure, it is not itself dangerous since the risk of significant bleeding from these swollen vessels is low. Finally, portal hypertension can lead to anorectal varices or hemorrhoids. Venous blood is transmitted from the rectum by three interconnected veins, the superior, middle, and inferior rectal veins. The superior rectal vein is the only one of the three that contributes to the portal circulation. Thus, because these three veins are interconnected, portal hypertension can cause backflow of blood down the superior rectal vein, which is then transmitted to the middle and inferior rectal veins. Again, the increased volume and pressure of this backflow leads to varices in the systemic middle and inferior rectal veins. Anorectal varices resulting from portal hypertension are not usually painful since they most often occur in areas with visceral innervation. However, these varices can be the source of chronic bleeding, though the volume of blood loss is not as dramatic as that associated with esophageal varices, and it is unlikely to represent a medical emergency. Treatment to relieve portal hypertension often involves surgical manipulation to divert large amounts of portal blood directly to large systemic veins that can handle the extra load. One approach is to surgically join the portal vein and inferior vena cava, which lie in close proximity to each other within the abdomen. This artificial portal caval anastomosis allows portal blood to flow directly into the inferior vena cava, thereby lowering the pressure within the portal system. Likewise, a portosystemic anastomosis can be achieved by joining the splenic vein with the left renal vein. Finally, a more modern approach is called transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunting, or TIPS. TIPS involves inserting a catheter into the jugular vein and threading it through the superior and inferior vena cavus to reach a hepatic vein tributary within the liver. From here, a channel is made through the parenchyma of the liver to reach a branch of the portal vein within the liver. A stent is then inserted to maintain a communication channel between the portal venous system and the systemic hepatic vein.